You're watching Color 10 News at 10 in high definition. Tonight, your governor calls Missourians the big winners of today's veto session. Good evening once again. Good to have you joining us tonight here on Color 10. I'm David Oliver. Republicans failed to overturn Governor Jay Nixon's veto of an income tax cut bill. Nixon argued the bill would hurt education and prescription drug costs. The final vote in the House was 94 in favor of overturning the veto, 67 opposed. 109 votes were needed. Color 10 has team coverage tonight, starting with Lindsey Klein from Jefferson City. Now, lawmakers say they'll be reworking the bill for next year. A packed house at the state capitol in Jefferson City Wednesday. Republicans hoping to make history in the number of vetoes overturned. I hope that we can uh, sustain some of the governor's vetoes and do not pass these bills that are unconstitutional. Democratic Representative Charlie Knorr was in favor of many of Governor Nixon's vetoes, including the veto on House Bill 253. I'm not surprised. Uh, when we passed that bill uh, last session, I was told in there, in chambers during session, that they knew the bill was probably unconstitutional, and we passed it anyway. Uh, thank goodness the governor has enough sense to veto such legislation. Nor says it's education that will bring businesses into Missouri, and cutting from that could create problems. All these programs we have in place are being cut if we lose revenue, and the governor held it back because by constitutional amendment, we have to have a balanced budget. And this bill could put us in jeopardy. Continuing down the list of House bills vetoed by the governor. But Republican lawmakers in favor of overturning Governor Nixon's veto feel the bill was misunderstood. I think there's been some misinterpretation of the statute or the bill and certainly some misinformation given to our schools. Let's just first remember that there cannot be any tax cut unless there's over $100 million in increased revenue. So that would not mean any cuts in any services or the uh, or to the schools at all. Austin remains hopeful. Obviously, I'm disappointed in it. I'm disappointed, and I hate it for our state, and I hate it for my district. Having said that, that means we'll just go right back to work and, and fix the problems that were uh, discussed with even within my own party that there was problems, and we'll fix that. We'll come back next year and try again. And although that vote was 94 to 67 today, those in favor of overriding the veto say that number is encouraging and there is still hope for the future. Reporting from Jefferson City, I'm Lindsey Klein. Governor Nixon also released this statement after today's vote saying, I applaud the legislators from both parties who came together to sustain my veto of what he calls this fiscally irresponsible bill, which would have defunded our schools and weakened our economy. Meantime, House Speaker Tim Jones also releasing a statement saying the governor engaged in political warfare against the first income tax cut in nearly a century and his campaign of what he calls misinformation and false logic ultimately was too much to overcome. However, we will make a tax cut our top legislative priority when we return for the 2014 legislative session coming up in January. A school superintendent in the Ozarks applauds the decision to let the veto stand. Color Test Melissa's turn continues our team coverage tonight with the local impact. Melissa? Educators say House Bill 253 would have drained millions of dollars each year from local school districts across Missouri. On the other hand, a group formed to help what it calls leveling the playing field and wants to make Missouri become more economically competitive. I have three million reasons why it wasn't good for Nixa. Dr. Stephen Kleinsmith, the superintendent of Nixa Public Schools, thinks the House made the right decision by upholding the veto of House Bill 253. It's three million dollars is what we would have lost if uh, this bill would not have uh, been vetoed. He says Missouri public schools are not fully funded to begin with. And so we're not getting what is supposed to come our way as it stands. So to take money out of an uh, underfunded uh, formula is bad news for public schools and ultimately bad news for kids. But not everyone feels that this veto is beneficial to the state of Missouri. A coalition was created this summer after the passage of House Bill 253. Grow Missouri believes that citizens of this state are carrying such a heavy tax burden that it leaves little room for growth. When more people are working, when more families have jobs, when businesses are hiring more people, that represents growth. And when all those people do those things, they're spending more money. 
that creates additional revenue. Aaron Willard says that kind of growth helps everybody, including the schools. When there's that kind of economic growth going on, a school district is absolutely going to have more money. Dr. Kleinsmith disagrees. I too like lower taxes. Uh, there's nothing wrong with trying to write a bill that helps lower taxes as long as it's done strategically and not in a way that's going to hurt students, in, in this case the public school students of, of Missouri, all nearly one million of them. Dr. Kleinsmith says every school district would have to handle cutbacks differently if a bill like this were to pass. He says in Nixa it would have increased class sizes and there would be a 10% reduction across the board for budget programs and services they currently provide, among many other things. All right, Melissa, thanks. Meanwhile, federal gun laws cannot be nullified in Missouri. The Senate today failed to override the governor's veto of House Bill 436, even though the House did. That bill declared any federal policies that infringe on the people's right to keep and bear arms be invalid in Missouri. It also would have allowed misdemeanor charges to be brought against federal authorities who attempt to enforce those laws or against anyone who publishes the name of a gun owner. One Missouri lawmaker, meanwhile, hopes to raise some campaign cash by rifling a, r raffling a rifle. State Senator Brian Neves represents an area near St. Louis and he's now using his Facebook page to promote the AR-15 giveaway. He gives big donors titles like sharpshooter, marksman, and sniper level. Senator Neves believes every family should have something like an AR-15 in their home and know how to use it. Um, whoever it is that wins the AR-15 at the event, whoever it is that, that is able to have it, they will have to go through a background check because that, that will not be done uh, from me to them. That will be done from a gun dealer. You have to donate $1,000 or more to be eligible for next month's raffle. New information tonight about the failed holdup of a liquor store. The suspect is now locked up in Arizona. Arvin Smith of Colorado is accused of shoplifting and possessing drug paraphernalia there. He's also charged tonight with several crimes for the attempted robbery at the Beer 30 liquor store over in Marionville. You may recall this earlier this month, their surveillance video there showed the man pulling a gun on a store clerk there named John. John Alexander, but Alexander drew his own gun and the suspect ran away. A plea deal tonight means a Lebanon man will spend 20 years in prison for keeping a young woman as a sex slave. Edward Bagley was in federal court today. Bagley and his wife Marilyn were charged with sexually abusing and torturing a mentally challenged woman for several years. Two men who were brought to the house to take part in the abuse were also sentenced today. Bradley Cook of Kirkwood got 20 years in prison without parole. Dennis Henry of Wheatland got a 10-year federal prison sentence. Take a look at this rare sight in Springfield. That's right, rain. It's been several weeks now and you can tell that our yards and everything else out there needs a little watering and Jamie Warner is here with hopefully what we will see are some more rain chances. Well, that was our first forecast. Right, and Dave, we're going to call them rain chances. We will have chances for rain. Not everybody will get the wet stuff, but we'll have an opportunity at it again tomorrow. Here's a look at radar. There's actually been a few isolated downpours late into the evening. Uh, those not too far from Springfield. One passing just to the south of Billings, sort of paralleling Highway 60 and then fading away just as some rain moved into the south end of Republic. That shower is now gone. There was also another batch of shower activity uh, near the Rogersville area, basically splitting Rogersville and Stratford to the north. It's, it's staying out of our open country, but we've still got some uh, light to moderate rains to the northwest of Fordland as the shower drifts toward the northeast. Otherwise, it's quiet on radar until you get into northwestern and north central areas of Kansas and northern Missouri. That's where the front will be marching south uh, during the day tomorrow. And you can see that shower and thunderstorm activity right now across Kansas and northwest Missouri. It looks like for us, not a lot going on in the morning hours, but we should see widely scattered showers and thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon. That may impact that drive home. Highs around 87. A lot cooler than that on Friday. Look at that coming up. Thousands of flags cover one community in the Ozarks on this, the 12th anniversary of the September 11th terror attacks. Volunteers in Willard do this every year. 70 of them work to display the 2,500 flags, which were paid for by the Chamber of Commerce. And a similar display can be found at College of the Ozarks. Members of the CFO Fire Department take turns there standing guard on the campus lawn. The flags are also visible from Highway 165 in Hollister. And certainly our daily activity 
properties are still being impacted by the terror attacks 12 years ago. Things like increased security and less privacy have now become normal. Evangel students were in elementary school that day back in 2001. The chair of the Department of Social Science at the school takes a group of students to D.C. every year and they tell us they can see and feel the security changes and Brian Sanders says everyone should still be vigilant. The reality is we do live in a new world since September 11th. The security allows us to live our lives in freedom and it's kind of a kind of an oxymoron when you when you stop and think about it. Flags were lowered to half staff today to honor those who fought for our freedom and the lives that were lost on that fateful day. Ozarks veterans are nearly halfway to their goal of raising $112,000 tonight. The Missouri Veterans Home in Mount Vernon needs a second bus to take the veterans on outings, shopping, and to various community events. With the help of local groups, so far nearly $50,000 has been raised. The specialized bus lowers to let veterans on but can only take 15 at a time. There are two upcoming events in an effort to raise the remaining $64,000. On September 28th, there's a motorcycle rally ride for freedom, but that is also there's also a poker run. On November 19th in Mount Vernon, there's the Heroes Run 5K, and you can register for both events by calling the Veterans Home at this number, 417-466-7103. Elks Lodge 409 in Springfield has helped with fundraising as well for that second bus. Tonight, new attend this Saturday. The American Red Cross wants to help you learn how to possibly save a life. On CPR Saturday, more than 25 trained leaders will offer free lessons in hands-only CPR at various fire stations around the area. Red Cross leaders say a quarter of Americans say they've been in some kind of situation where someone needed CPR. Organizers expect to train more than 15,000 people as part of this event across the region. The reason that it's so important is that uh, in a cardiac emergency, just simply doing hands-only CPR can actually save a life, and it's far better than doing absolutely nothing. And for more information on CPR Saturday and the new Red Cross mobile app for your smartphone, we have it all on our website. We are at OzarksFirst.com. Six months now after takeoff, Southwest Airlines appears satisfied with its service in Branson. It's just a logical fit for us to be here. Tonight, the company's expansion plan and the growth shown by the other airline that also operates in Branson, Frontier.
Now, more local news here at 10 tonight. Southwest Airlines wants to increase its presence in the Ozarks. The nation's third largest airline has been flying to the Branson Airport now for six months. Leaders at the Branson Airport say Southwest has brought more people to the area. The Dallas-based company is now in the process of merging with its subsidiary, AirTran. Currently, the two services combine to account for more than three-fourths of the airport's flights. It was a huge deal for Branson, uh, the local economy, and uh, everybody involved that gets the benefit from the air service that they bring to our market. There's many things that make this yeah, this area very successful and again underserved because there's so much here and it cuts down on driving because we do ultimately compete with the car. Southwest and also Frontier Airlines both plan to expand flight offerings in Branson. Frontier anticipates a 42% increase in seating capacity. Jimmy Warner's back with an update for us on the skies tonight. And an update on temperatures too. Today back in the 90s. I am done with it. And I think Mother Nature may be done with it as well, at least for much of the Ozarks for the rest of this year. Looks like a cooling trend as we approach the weekend. Now look at that coming up. And now weather with Color 10 News Chief Meteorologist Jamie Warner. Well, I for one am not sad to see this go away for a little while. It's nice to have when you want to go to the lake or you want to get in the pool, but we're kind of past that now. It's halfway through the month of September practically, and fall is right around the corner, so it's time to start cooling off. This certainly wasn't cool today, what we had to deal with. Well into the 90s, in fact, 94 here in Springfield. That's day number five in a row with highs exceeding the 90 degree mark. This may be 
the last time that we in Springfield deal with 90 degree temperatures and I think in a lot of other areas as we slip further and further into September the pattern is changing and it will make it harder and harder for heat and especially extended periods of heat to linger very long. Outside right now under mostly clear skies it's now in the 70s, 77 in Springfield, 72 in West Plains, 76 in Rolla. By Friday these may be high temperatures, not what we're dealing with at 10 o'clock at night. Uh, temperatures are a little on the warm and muggy side out there for this time of the year. And we've seen a few isolated downpours out there. Most of that activity has since faded. What we are watching right now is areas to the north. This is a, a cold front that's dropping south right now across Kansas and northern Missouri. And we've seen a pretty good cluster of showers and thunderstorms develop here in association with that front and some upper level energy. And that will be sliding east overnight tonight. It looks like most of that will probably fall apart before it can impact any of our northern county, counties. Behind this front, Canadian Comfort, high pressure centered in Canada, will be pushing south and east and to the upper Midwest and across the Great Lakes and it will push a very comfortable air mass into our area by Friday. We're going to go from highs in the 90s today to highs in the mid to upper 80s tomorrow, and it'll still be kind of humid out there. And then after Thursday, uh, looks like we'll find the cooler and less humid air mass really building in a high of only 77 Friday afternoon, and I think we'll see that repeated again on Saturday. We need the rain, and we could get some with this front as it makes its way across the region. Uh, we've seen very dry weather the last four weeks after very wet weather before that. Joplin only a trace in the last four weeks. Harrison only one one hundredth Less than five one hundreds here in Springfield, officially out of the airport. West Plains shy of a tenth, and Rolla shy of two tenths of an inch of rainfall. So, will we get rain? Well, some of us will see some more rain on uh, Thursday. Overnight tonight, we're just about done with it, I think. Now, toward morning, as that cluster of showers and thunderstorms sort of builds east and in northern Missouri, we could get some of the southern fringes of that sneaking into our northern counties. There won't be a lot to go around, I don't think, though, during the morning hours. During the afternoon, during the heating of the afternoon, uh, as that uh, front continues to slide south into northern Arkansas, I think there will be a chance for widely scattered showers and thunderstorms across southern Missouri and in northern Arkansas. And then Thursday night is when the dry air floods the area, and that will make for a beautiful day on Friday, again with highs only in the 70s. Tonight, a low of 69 degrees, so kind of warm and, and muggy out there. Tomorrow, high of 87. Low 90 still possible though across northern Arkansas. Here's your comfortable weather. 77 on Friday, 77 on Saturday, 83 on Sunday. Morning lows in the 50s Saturday and Sunday and some areas north and east of Springfield dropping into the 40s. Moisture will try to make a return to the region by early next week and with it a chance for showers returns to the forecast. And you've got a couple of days off, Jim. The Lippers now. Oh, right. Drills it to Well, the Royals make a late season playoff push, but next in sports, Nick Carboni will talk to one expert who says they will not make it to the promised land.
now, Color 10 Sports with Nick Carboni. The St. Louis Cardinals were a game ahead of Pittsburgh in the division race when the day started, but surprising and potentially bad news before tonight's game against Milwaukee. Catcher Yadier Molina, a healthy scratch for what's being called a family issue. It's about all we know right now. I know that is Wayne Gretzky, former Blue, looking out tonight. But card starter Lance Lynn hadn't been the great one lately. He did pull it together tonight, however. Starts the game off with a strikeout. He struck out 10 in six innings. Top of the second. Molina's replacement, Tony Cruz, throws that one in a center as Carlos Gomez attempts to steal. Daniel Descalso really could have had it, though, but he makes up for it here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Still 1-0 Brewers. Descalso with two outs. Big hit there. We're all tied up at one apiece. Now I'm going to show you former Springfield Cardinal Matt Adams with a man on. Why did I do that? Because he blasts one out of the park. Two-run shot. That's a game-breaker. Makes it 5-1 cards. They take a big W, keeping the Pirates at bay. Pittsburgh winning its game with the Rangers tonight. St. Louis will go for a sweep of the Brewers tomorrow. They're a game up on the Pirates. The Royals close to a wild card spot at Cleveland this afternoon. Good start, Alex Gordon. Great is good. 19th of the year. Solo blast to begin the game. 1-0. It's 3-0 Royals in the bottom half of the inning. Indians get to James Shields a bit. Michael Brantley drives home too. It's a one-run game, but his name is Big Game James. And this is a big game. He went eight innings. He struck out seven. The Royals win 6-2. The Red Sox won tonight. So KC now two games. Out of the wild card, joining us now is Sam Mellinger from the Kansas City Star. Sam, this team has had so many rough stretches this year, including a seven-game losing streak that actually ended within the last few weeks. Why have they been able to stay in it? <laughs> because they've been as good in stretches as they've been bad in others. I mean, this, is, uh, this isn't this is just a royal thing. This team is historically streaky. I mean, there's just there's never been a team that has had a 17-3 and three stretch like the Royals did right after the All-Star break and a 4-19 stretch uh, like they did in May. And, you know, the the other question then is, right, becomes like, why are they so damn streaky? And, and I don't have a great answer for that. I mean, that's just... Uh, I thought a team built on pitching and defense wouldn't be like that, but uh, you know, you just never know what you're going to get with these guys. And it would mean a, a lot, certainly, for this fan base if the Royals got into the playoffs. But what does it mean to actually have meaningful baseball in Kansas City now into September? It means people are freaking out, honestly. <laughs> like, I mean, nobody knows. Like, I mean, this is a completely new experience, right? I mean, we we had like, you know, the the great fluke of 2003 when. Um, you know, that was the team of Jose Lima signed sight unseen from the independent leagues, and they, they somehow stayed in it through September. But this is a legitimately, uh, you know, pretty good baseball team. They're not great. They're not, like, very, very good. But, they're you know, they, this is not smoke and mirrors like that other team. So, you know, it means that I'm sitting out here on my deck, by the way, <laughs> Um, you know, watching some uh, like a Chiefs replay on my iPad, and then on my phone, I've got the the Rays Red Sox game. Absolutely. You know, if you know that you got a scoreboard watch, I mean, it's a completely different experience. People are people around here aren't, aren't used to that. Yeah, absolutely, Sam. And uh, last question, about thirty seconds. A lot needs to happen, of course, in the next sixteen games. You talk about the Red Sox and other teams that are ahead of them. In your opinion, will the Royals get into the playoffs? No, I mean, the, the, the odds are against them. It's possible. I mean, it's, it's definitely possible, but, um, you know, the, the list of things that have to go right is, is so much longer than the list of things that, that could go wrong. I mean, um, you know, who, who knows? They might have another seven-game losing streak in them. You know what I mean? But but it's possible, and, and right now possible is a, a huge improvement from the last few years when they're 25 games out by this point. All right, Sam Mellinger from the KC Star, thanks for joining us. Sure, thanks for having me. All right, so Sam says no, but now mm -hmm. it's just two games. Right. They're getting really close. They have to go to Detroit now, a first-place team, but they had success against them in their last series. So at least they're making it exciting for their fans now in September. October surprises. We uh, talk about them every year. I they know. happen. You they never know. They haven't been there since 1985. But I remember we'll see. Well. All right, yeah. thanks, Nick. Final word after this, folks.
are tonight's winning lottery numbers. And news will continue in a moment. This is why you're taking a couple of days off, because it's going to be fun. <laughs> oh, it's going to get like, nice again. There you go. Sure. So excited. 87 tomorrow afternoon. We'll see a, a few showers and thunderstorms around in the afternoon, and then it's off to nice weather. Well, he's in the 70s. You're going to see sun. Jamie driving down the road with all four windows <laughs> all open. All four windows open. Good night, folks.